Hi, welcome back to Our Hollywood. I'm Kim. And I'm Daniel. And today we have this Luis. Oh, wait, how do you want to? Okay, because you explained to this to me a little bit, but I wasn't. Do you want me to introduce you as Luis Pablo or just Luis? Uh, I mean, like, my name is Luis Pablo, but I mean, you can just call me Luis. It doesn't matter. Because okay. it's like kind of like a YouTube. Zendaya thing. No, because oh. like, oh. okay. like, that's not his last name. I thought it was his last name, but it's not. So it's like, it's like Zendaya, kind of. Like Zendaya knows last well, name. Well, I mean, no last name. I mean, I have a last name. It's Lopez. I'm, I'm, I mean, I go by Luis Pablo because Pablo is my middle name. But like, I usually just go mm-hmm. by Luis Pablo. But my last name is Lopez. But I mean, it's it's whatever. Like, if you want to go by Luis, Luis, just go by Luis. It doesn't matter. What's what's your totally stage name? Stage. Um, week. Um, my stage name. Yeah, I usually go by Luis Pablo. I, okay. I mean, that's my that's my stage name. Oh my god, I'm okay. like a hooker at this point. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay, yeah, we'll go by that. Um, All so, right. um, today's topic is well, before we explain it, um, we're gonna ask you some little questions so people can get to know you. So, why did you want to go into this industry and why did you want to start acting? Um, and what are you doing right now? Like, what are you doing for that? Yeah, so, um, I mean, I've I mean, I'm from Texas, so I moved here to LA for acting, of course. That's like the reason why I came here, because I'm studying acting. Um, I'm doing my bachelor's in fine arts for film. And the reason was because ever since I was little, I've always just been, I've seen myself as a performer, in other words. (laughs) And I just, I don't know, I've always just liked the arts and everything, especially growing up in the Hispanic community that I grew up in. There wasn't really accessibilities to me in that aspect. No one that I hung out with or none of the boys that I was with always they were mostly into sports and they weren't really into the whole theater or acting or anything like that. But I was, I always saw myself like either singing or dancing in the cafeteria in elementary school or middle school. And it's just been, it's been a passion of mine, especially because it's like you get into a character where you, you leave the world for a second, whether it be for one scene or for two scenes, you leave the real world and you just read a script and you, you become someone else. You don't become yourself anymore. Um, so that's one of my biggest like um, inspirations for the acting industry. And right now, um, I mean, because of COVID, my school, my school is a very hands-on school. We do a lot of technique and a lot of like scene work in class. But obviously since last year, which was what, March? March when we went back on Zoom, um, it's changed a lot. So it's more of like, more of, I guess you could say self-taping and doing more of mm-hmm. our own work at home. And it's been a big change, but I'm, I'm kind of getting used to it at this point. Um, my school has allowed some, film, some films to start taking place. For example, I think in October, I filmed in the, um, you had to go get COVID tested and then some, some agreements and then some tests. But we actually did like a little, a little scene here at, the, um, at this park on, like by the Hollywood side. And it was pretty fun. I mean, obviously, we all had to be away from the director and the producer. It was social distancing, of course. We only took off our masks when the camera was rolling. And then when they said cut, our mask was back on. So right now, it's just more a bunch of uh, technically just self-taping for classes as homework. And also, when I'm lucky, when it's available, we do, like, actually films, like, at the park. So that's something to do. Yeah, that's interesting. I didn't... Like, yeah, a lot of my kind of classwork right now is all online because clearly. Um, But I think, yeah, like, I don't really think there's really any other ways to learn a lot of these stuff other than hands-on. Like, you can't really do a lot of this. I really looked out. Yeah, you really did. You just... I I just graduated. Yeah, (laughs) right before. Yeah. Yeah. So that's fun. Um, What kind of, like movies you want to act in or tv shows like literally anything or is there anything you have a specific passion for obviously hopefully whatever gets me a job for sure i need, okay. to, I need to pay the bills so that's my goal yeah. just get paid period but um i feel like me personally my forte is comedy so i feel like i would do i would do really great in, a, in like a sketch type of like tv uh show like for example i daniel told me he doesn't like friends but you know what i I love the type of friends and like that type of comedy. So I, I just see myself working at least one skit like that, whether it be friends or Saturday night, I, I don't know, one of those things, but for sure something uh-huh. that's my, my forte okay. for sure. Interesting. Well, thank you for telling us that. Um, and now we're going to talk a little bit. Oh, just kidding. Do we want to do what we watched? Yeah. Okay. So well, I think this is the first time it's even going to go live. Cause I've been cutting it out of the last ones. Cause we talked too much. Yeah. Um, but basically um, we're just each going to go around and say something that we watched. Um, just as a little icebreaker before we get into the deep stuff. So, Kim, do you want to start? 
Um, the only television I've watched <laughs> is Grownish. I caught up on like the new, okay. like the oh first my gosh. half. Yeah, I don't know. Like what I love watching. On? I'm on the most current one. Like yeah, um, okay, yeah. It's such a good show. I love it. Yeah. I don't know. Like, it is a good show, but it's also, like, the... I don't like where they just took the season. Like, they... Like, because Luca and Zoe were together, and then yeah, all and of a sudden... And all of a sudden, they're not even talking... They're not yeah. even, like, friends at this point. It's and then crazy. I was, like, the love interest just don't make sense. I'm, like, he literally, after she chose Luca, like, he was just, like, whatever. He was just on his own, like, whatever. And also, I don't even know. So I loved it in the beginning, but now, like, the direction it's turning, I'm just, like, what is going on? Like, what is happening at all? Like, I just, I don't get it. But I will still watch it because I love all the, like, actors in it. So that's the only reason I'm watching it is because I love all the actors in it. So they Oh, I actually met Vivek at work. Like in, really? in the drive-through, yeah, the vet came to death, and I was like, "It's him, it's him, it's him." But like, he's so calm in person. I mean, Doug yeah. is an actor, but he's so like, it was him, and I was like, "It's just one of those faces you see, and you're like, oh my gosh, it's him." Uh-huh. I just love that show. It's a thing Did you say anything to him? He, he's his, his character's name is Vivek. Oh, 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 oh. Did you say anything to him? No, but I googled his name afterwards just to be safe, and it was him. I was like, yeah. the guy from Gronish, Vivek, and I was like, oh fuck, it is him. But no, I didn't tell him anything. I was too shy. Yeah, he's like one of the, like the side characters. I feel like. Okay. I hope they like bring out his character a little bit more. I would love to. I mean, they did. I don't know if you saw season two or it was it season one when they were like, oh, like he was doing drugs because he was trying to get. Yeah. He was trying to get it by. Like, yeah, but then or, like what? it just completely. Oh my God, you have to watch. Like it doesn't make sense if you don't watch the show. But yeah, that was like interesting, and then they complete. That's the thing I hate about that show is because like they'll start like interesting plot lines, but then like fix it in two episodes, and I'm like. I understand it's a comedy show and we need to keep it like a little lighthearted, but yeah. also like they choose to like have dialogue about serious topics. And I feel like yeah. you can do both, you know, but I don't know. <laughs> Every episode is always a different story for sure. It's yeah, always like yeah. a, there's a seriousness to it and then like a comedy side to it. Mm-hmm. But I love the actor, so I will always watch it. Fine. So that's my, okay. <laughs> that's my thing. Um, I recently started watching Modern Family because they put all 11 seasons on Hulu. And so like when it was airing, like, obviously, I was too young. Like, when it started, it's been going for 11 years. And my mom, like... It would, just ended, right? Yeah, like, a year ago, I think. And my mom would not let me watch it. Like, because she's been watching it since the beginning. Mm-hmm. And she would not let me, let me watch it because she said it wasn't for kids. And so then they put it on Hulu. And I was like, Mom, I'm going to watch it now. I love when that happens. Yeah. When you finally get old enough to watch something you weren't allowed I'm to. I'm like, yeah, I get it. Like, I don't think I would have gotten the jokes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um... It's so good, though. Mm-hmm. I love Modern Family. That's why Family. it went on for so long. Yeah, I understand. Like, I'm going to watch all 11 seasons. I'm already on season three, and they put it, like, a week ago. Um, oh, yeah. wow. Well, yeah, they're short, no? Yeah, they're, like, 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, but they're also, really good I, episodes, though. They're funny. I think it's really funny. Yeah, and I, I took a comedy writing class, like, last year. It was when it was still in person, so, yeah, last year. Um, and we learned about, like, the structure of comedy episodes. And, like, now watching a comedy show, I'm like, interesting because modern family does it so well where it's like they start three different storylines and then they all combine and like when their family's all together and it's so chaotic and i'm like it's so yeah. cute though i love modern family um and also i think today's wandavision episode is based off of modern family really? <gasps> oh my gosh it's yeah. thursday huh oh my mm-hmm. gosh okay i'm finally gonna wa- start it tonight yeah because i've been waiting because i know it ends soon yeah, I know it ends with them, yeah yeah with them i was so confused so. when it came out i was like where's the second episode and i was refreshing the website i was like where's the second it's episode? so refreshing they- a lot of people don't like it what do you mean like it's the- really good oh no the, the 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 how they're releasing it um at first i hated it because i was like this is I was so much, confused. But I'm used to it, so I don't care. Yeah, I think it's, like, a good way to remind people, like, this is how TV used to come out. Yeah. Like, you, Netflix has totally, like, changed how we, like, consume media, yeah. like, and binge watching and stuff. So I think it's refreshing. Like, yeah. having something to look forward to. I also saw TikTok that, like, every single week we're going to have something Marvel-related on yeah. Disney+. Plus. Or, like, a movie is being released. Yeah. Like, Black Widow and Yeah, then there's something. Loki. There's yeah. something going on. That's fun. That's yeah, really and then after each series is done, they're doing like a making of. Mm-hmm. So fun. That is fun. How- Marvel, Marvel knows what they're doing. No, they exactly. but especially with WandaVision. It's like, that. Mm-hmm. I feel like that one's a great like marketing plan because like the way they're doing it, it's yeah. just, WandaVision hits different to be honest. I just think no, it's yeah. I love, like I'm so jealous that I didn't think of this. I know, you told me that. Like I <laughs> love this concept. I think it's so like, I that's love so that th- it changes. Like I think that's so good and I, yeah. a trope that people don't use enough in television. Like, 
to do something different every fucking episode like that is just and like they really understand the formats of each of these shows so like mm-hmm. when it's in the black and white like 50 60s the even the actors like embody how they were that must be such then. a fun acting challenge no, yeah <laughs> yeah and also scarlet witch favorite character and elizabeth olsen literally elizabeth amazing. olsen Scarlet Witch, I was hoping she would get her own movie or something, but she got her own show. So at this, this is point, better, I honestly. Yeah, yeah. It's like tw- yeah. three times as long as a movie, so yeah, exactly. I will take it. I, 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 I just waiting the, to watch it. I think the only thing I hate is the fact that the episodes are like, what, 20 minutes? I'm like, oh, come on, can it be longer? Mm-hmm. I but heard I mean, they're the last really three, good. Yeah, I heard the last year supposed to be an hour. Oh, shit. Because like, the reason they were short is because that's how long sitcoms are. That's true. Um, But the last three, it's kind of leaving the sitcom. It's like the... Yeah, I know. I know apart. what's going on. I, yeah. I definitely. How were you on Wandavision TikTok? Did I send you something? That, like- no, I I got on Wandavision TikTok my own, and I haven't watched any of the episodes. But I know exactly what's going on. I just like don't. I just wanted to like be going on. Yeah, so can, yeah. I think started today because the last three apparently are going to be huge. What did what, you? Watch? Yeah, what did you watch? Um. I saw this movie uh, called uh, The High Note. It's um, it's on HBO Max. Oh, um, it's with um, uh, what's yeah. her name? Uh, it's, she's from Blackish. Oh, uh, she plays the mom. Tracy Ellis Ross. Ross. That's no yes. way. <laughs> I fuck, I love that. I'm um, all like, so yeah, her. Yeah. I think it's such a good movie. Have you guys seen it? No. Mm-hmm. It's Honestly, really good. I feel like. like I... No, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, what were you gonna say? Like I don't know. I... It was just. It like, was like one I... of those movies that was about to come out, but then COVID hit. Oh. Yeah, yeah it really, yeah, I remember. Really yeah, Dakota Johnson, she's honestly so hot. I was like, damn, I, I love her so much. But um, <laughs> it's like, uh, w- the way I would describe this movie is a good, a good. if you like The Star is Born, you're going to like this one, for sure. Okay. I think it was really good. I think it was really like, it was so different. I mean, I honestly thought it was like, a, it gave me a Devil Wear Prada type of vibe. But then mm-hmm. we actually start watching it, it's like completely opposite. And I feel like it's so, I don't know, I just really loved it. And like, it took place here in LA, so like, it was the... I think that the, um, the image is really nice. And the storyline was also nice too, because there's so many plot twists in that film that I was like, what the heck? Like, this is this is supposed to be artistic. What the heck? But I think it's really good. You guys should really watch it. I think that's I think it's one of my best movies I've seen recently. Oh, wow. okay. I was, you said um, Double Wars Prada, and then I remembered um, the Emma Stone Cruella trailer. I don't want to talk about it right now. Why? Oh my gosh, what? You don't... I just don't think she was the right casting. I love this I, Emma. This, I yeah, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just gonna say this is changing things up. So I feel like I feel like this is a nice twist because this is the story of Corella, <laughs> and honestly, she gives me bad bitch vibes here. I don't know. I just well, I just, okay. Here's my thing. I was watching the trailer, and when she does her little evil laugh, I was like, oh no, because like she's not scary. Emma Stone, we love you. Like this has been an no, Emma Stone stand podcast. We like, still stand. Yeah, no we still what. stand. Like she looks great with the half hair, but I just think like she's not scary. And Cruella Deville is literally so scary. Yeah, because like she just wants to kill dogs. Like that's terrifying. <laughs> like what has yeah. to go on in here to just want to kill puppies? But yeah, I don't know. I, don't know. I liked it though. I, I think it was pretty cool though. Like I don't know. I like her accent. I was like, oh wow, that's 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 oh, her actress accent. right there. I don't want them but... to grow boss Cruella. The I little line they... at the very end. Oh, that I am woman, hear me roar. Yeah. I do... <laughs> oh. I, I, I'm just not going to say anything because, like, I feel like I'm, yeah. and I'm out of liking it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I like, I, I was, like, a, being a hater towards Maleficent, and then it came out, and I was like, I love it. Maleficent is a great movie. Yeah. but It I for sure gave it. me the Joker vibes. The preview gave me Joker vibes. I was like, oh, wow, Disney Joker. That's literally what everyone was saying on Twitter. They were like, you guys just don't like it because it's like the girl Joker. And I was like, no. Because we didn't like the guy Joker either. Like, no. I don't know. I will hold oh, my me. tongue yeah. until I watch it. Absolutely. Because we can't really. I've been looking forward to it. But honestly, Disney doesn't do trailers very well. No, they really don't. They really, Disney, we're so sorry. They don't yeah. care. They're not listening. No, no one from Disney's listening. No. But like, I, yeah, I agree. The trailers for Disney are just not it. Yeah. You know who does trailers very well? Um, 90 Day Fiance. Okay. Like, they'll oh ed- no, God. but just reality TV in general, they'll edit what's going to happen completely differently than it actually happens. And then you're like, that's so That's shady. how they edit the show, too. Yeah, I know. It's clever. <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, to give it drama, them? for sure. Yeah. Did you should hire some TLC production assistants. <laughs> they too. own it. TLC. That's so scary. They own everything. At this point, they Anyways. own everything. Mm-hmm. Literally switching gears, doing a whole 180. Mm. It was really fun. You don't have to sing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, we're gonna, our topic for today is exploring a male body image in film and TV. Okay. Daniel's well, been like waiting for this. Yes, like one. this is the one that I've been most excited to do and also did not want to do at all. Uh huh. Yeah, exactly. Because like it's just a lot. Um, but so the way we're gonna split this up is this week we're doing um, male body image in film and TV, and next week we're doing uh, female body image in mm-hmm. film and TV. And we're also, like, yes, like, we're going to talk a little bit about um, gender and, like, mm-hmm. the reason we, sp- do you want to explain a little bit why we split it up into, like. Well, there, okay, I think, well, I don't know, why did we? Well, because there's, it's completely different. It's completely different, different things. Yeah. I think, oh, because our episodes have been really long lately, and I think if we were to do both male and female body image in one episode, it would just, it's just too big of a topic. And also, like, they're different they're rooted in different like facets of like yeah. gender quote unquote mm-hmm. um and also yeah i know it's like male and female we don't have like a non-binary one i mean we'll definitely like touch upon it i think more in like the um the second part and but i just want because that's a whole different thing there's like visual yeah. there's basically no um representation of non-binary people no no in film and television which is an issue in itself and we hope to talk about it someday but we want to have the right person yeah um to talk more about that topic and also like give ourselves the time to do research as we should yeah so let's get started okay so the way we kind of split this up is just let's talk about the female versus male perspective first just so that we can explain a little bit why uh, we're splitting it up and then again like you said like these are very basic like gender constructs like this is not gender is a social construct yeah. let's just like get that clear yeah literally a, a social construct and it's weird how much For it sure. affects our society and we'll, yeah. we're gonna talk about it anyways so from like a female perspective since like i'm the only woman i also do not speak for all women mm-hmm. obviously this is just like my little take i just wrote like a little paragraph so i didn't forget what i was gonna say but i said i've definitely (laughs) been aware that there's only one real body type that men are quote unquote allowed to have and if they don't they feel they were inferior to others similar to how fat women have been portrayed it's been weird because i know it hits a different set of nerds for men especially because men don't really have the space to speak out against it or when they do they're made feel they're made to be made to be like less manly or like feel inferior to other men but it's it's just weird to see that only male bodies and the only male bodies we see in film are that are seen as attractive are muscular boys and most more mm-hmm. recently like lanky like uh, timothy chalamet yeah. types of boys white boy of the month which we'll touch upon later <laughs> um but it, that's not the reality there are so many bodies in between there and I think it's weird that, like, those are the only two body types that, like, actors are allowed to have. Yeah. It's also not just, like, there literally isn't just skinny and fat. There's, like, yeah. 50,000 different kinds of body types. Yeah. Like, it's just, like, to, to, like, force people into this tiny little box if their body doesn't look how... Exactly. Chris Hemsworth's body look. Like, I just don't... Yeah. And I think it's weird. Like, we talked about this before. Like, the fat... Like, the definition of fat is so misconstrued Mm -hmm. based on how like media and also just like yeah like society like puts people in boxes and i think that's like another quip that i have with society is like why does everybody need to fit in one box people are way more multifaceted and way more layered than that so i just think i think we're definitely inching towards like not throwing people in boxes and allowing people to like express themselves truly and also like evolve as a person because like especially like something like gender like it it grows with you as a person I feel like and like especially like um experiences you have and stuff can totally change how you view maybe you felt like you couldn't express your gender how you want to etc etc there's just like so many layers onto Mm -hmm. it but for the purpose of this podcast we're talking about like males yes so really quickly before we start talking like more in general um I didn't want to talk a little bit about like my experience with my body image and then yours also if you're okay with that um and then kim will go next week with our Mm -hmm. female guest um so because i i feel like i need to say this but basically and you should have the space to talk about it yeah 
And also, like, it kind of ties into why we split it up into two. So, mm-hmm. like, basically, when we were planning this episode, I think on the on the on the Google Doc that we have, it literally just said like body image and film and TV. So that's very vague. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and like, it was just structured differently. And then as we started like actually like scheduling it, we were like, this is not gonna work. And the reason was because like, I I I don't know how the conversation started, but I was basically like, oh, I'm fat. And Kim was like, no, you're not fat. And so then I was like, well, why? Not this is not me attacking Kim, though. We already discussed this, but I'm saying yeah. like, <laughs> but it's good to have this conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah. It's important. That's the point. Um, and I was like, well, why does, like, what's the, what gets to be considered fat, mm-hmm. you know? And so I am aware that right now I am, sm- I don't even know what the word is. Like, I am losing weight, so I'm aware that at some point, if I, you know, keep losing weight and like get a different body type, that I won't be able to speak on the experiences of fat people mm-hmm. because I know that I, I like if I'm not fat anymore like I can't really mm-hmm. but then again like so but my, it's a different type of take I think yes because also yeah. like my best friend Gracie and I we used to have this saying like it's gonna sound really stupid but I'll explain it so I used to say like once a fatty always a fatty because like I <laughs> and like it sounds silly but like I really mean like the trauma never leaves you yeah yeah 100 it definitely like shapes also it affects the reasons why you want to lose weight and yeah. everything it's like it's there's so much layers into it yes deep breath <laughs> yeah <sighs> but basically there's so many there's so many effects afterwards it's like body dysphoria hits kicks too okay yeah. um what do you think okay so basically when i was younger i was fat and like i can say that with confidence like i was fat i was just i but i didn't like I that's just how it like people have different metabolisms like that's literally <laughs> the root of it like people just have different metabolisms and I like candy and I like <laughs> sweets and I like junk food and that's that's just it and I did not like <laughs> exercising like that's literally that's it like that's it but I didn't really care like I wasn't I was just living life like I didn't really care like just I always I always was like oh, I'm fat. But, like, I didn't see it as a bad thing. I was just, like, I'm mm-hmm. fat. And this was, like, I want to say up to, like, kind of middle school. Like, right before middle school. But then when I got to middle school, that's when middle school Shit is hell head. on earth. Mm-hmm. That is where everyone's traumas come from. Like, that's where they start. And that's where so, it all, like, starts in the beginning. Yeah. And so, in middle school was kind of, like, when I was, like, okay, the people don't like fat people. Mm-hmm. Like people really don't like fat people. And um, and then kind of like in high school, and that's when I was like not okay with my body at all, like mentally. And then like a senior year, I was like, I actually do. And then <laughs> I moved to Los Angeles. And that is a whole other because I don't know what it is, but like obviously we've talked about that we love LA, but I just the the culture there and like the atmosphere, I literally was the first few years, I just like binge binge eat binge Mm eight yeah because i like i didn't know what to do and i felt bad about my body but i was like i'm just gonna eat my feelings which does not work i don't know if you all know but it does not work and so um it was just not going well and then i like spiraled and have a mental breakdown and then i was like okay well i'm gonna start working out like for myself because i also got a physical trainer like a personal trainer and he was like well why do you want to do it and i was like literally just for me because i don't want to like i want to feel more confident clothes that i want to wear because I really like like fashion, but I just don't feel comfortable wearing like things mm-hmm. with the. And you're also tall as fuck, so it's like already hard enough to find clothes. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Literally, yeah. I, I never had that issue because I'm so short, and he oh every time I'm like oh this, and he's like that won't fit me, and I was like yeah, well it's your size, and he's like no the length. <laughs> yeah, because like a large shirt, like uh, theoretically I am a large, but like mm-hmm. if I raise my hands, you will see my entire body. <laughs> Like, it'll be a crop top all of a sudden. Oh my I, gosh. I'm tall. Two in so one. Have, yeah, so I have to get XL because, like, it just fits me better. And then it's, like, overly baggy, which also doesn't help, like, body image. So, yeah. Um, the yeah. fashion industry is a different story. Yeah, that's a whole – we won't even get into that. But, yeah, basically, I was just not comfortable with my body and, like, my solution, which is not the solution. Like, I really don't think there's mm-hmm. a way for – like one specific way for everyone to get comfortable with their body for me it was just I wanted to lose weight and like it's helping but like it's still not completely um but I do think it is helping and I don't I don't want to like be like oh the only way for you to feel more comfortable in your body is to lose weight yeah because like no it's not and like it's even if I literally look like Chris Hemsworth I don't think like the feelings of like 
that I had during those like years will go away. Kind of like the kid in it <laughs> where he like grows mm, up and like yeah, yeah. Pennywise is like you're a fatty or something. <laughs> he literally says that in the movie, and I was like, oh my god but um the trauma kicked in when he said that yeah pennywise is fat hobic and racist and <laughs> i guess he's just hungry i don't know but basically yeah um that is my very very summarized body image journey and that's why i just i want to say out the like get that out of the way because like i a lot every time i'm like oh i'm fat people are like no you're not fat and i'm like like but I, in your head i you yeah still feel like like that. i know i don't look what you would consider someone fat to look like but i literally am like for, for me, I'm like in my head, what I was thinking was like, unless I look like <laughs> these like Marvel mm-hmm. superheroes, then I'm so fat. Yeah. If there's a little extra that's in the belly, so I'm so fat. Bad. That's so yeah. bad because that's not, that's, and that sucks that you feel like that way because yeah. that's not the truth, but that's what media conditions yeah. us to think of, which is why we're making this episode. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so at least you're going to tell us a little bit if you're comfortable to like your body image journey um as much as you're comfortable sharing no um yeah for sure um i also yeah when i was i also i actually it's funny because i actually used to be skinny like i used to be a petite little boy i was like bones i was like fabulous supposedly right um i was very skinny growing up and um i think it's the summer of my second grade that's when i don't know how it happened but that's when i gained like enormous amount of weight like my whole family members were like where's the louise and i was like it's me because i had gained like i think at least a good 50 pounds like little what when you're in second grade you're like what eight seven years old i was little mm-hmm. and um i gained weight by second grade and that weight never left my body it never did i heard it from all my family members like oh my gosh like this kid is not the same Luis that we know like it was just a whole ass like dilemma growing up but i never saw myself as fat i was always like i'm me i'm living life i'm a little kid who little kids don't think about their weight and i just i just never cared about it i was I was in second grade, all of my elementary school, like, I mean, I think I was aware that I wasn't a petite kid, but I just didn't care about being fat. I was just living, living life, being myself. And then I think it's when my, when middle school started, which was sixth grade, when it hits you hard, because like, it's a, it's a whole ass different world. Like, that's when you start seeing so many things, so many bodies, you see the older kids, you see so everything, you're like, wait, why, why do I look different? I mean, not that I was the only chubby kid, but there was, we weren't, as scattered around as all the other kids you know so that's when I started like wondering like why don't I look like them and then obviously hearing from your family like hey you're not you're not mm-hmm. looking good like you're looking you're eating too much like at the family gatherings like I know it's a joke but everyone's like Otro plato? like I'm just trying to get a second plate bro I'm trying to yeah. eat and that's when that's when mentally like those things are getting to you whether it, it whether it was five or six years ago till this day I still like have those things in my like mm-hmm. in my head and yeah just growing up it was like very like why do I look different why am I not losing weight etc cetera, etc cetera. and i've heard it all i've heard it all from family members and long story short of i mean i've always just been chubby since i think my junior year of high school towards the high school towards senior year it's when i started to say like hey i kind of want to take care of myself a little more if i'm being fully honest here i wasn't the healthiest way but i did drop a, a great amount of weight by my senior year i don't know how i did it but it just it just happened and then here's the thing it doesn't it isn't, you would think it gets better. I mean, yeah, there's a point where it's like, oh my gosh, Louise, Louise lost weight. Like, oh my gosh, she just seen not the same back here from freshman year. But the difference is I've heard it all. I've heard it all from people say, oh, okay, you were too chubby, like start eating less or, or you need to tone it down. Like stop eating as much as you do. Like, why are you eating that? You're chubby. You lose weight. And now it's like, Louise, you're looking unhealthy. Are you eating? Like, are you anorexic? Do you, are you throwing up? Is everything okay? Are you not eating? So I've literally heard it all at this point where it's like, I need to start keep taking care of myself for me and loving myself for me. And like, like we said right now, like the body dysphoria is something real. Like I consider myself having it because the trauma is there. It really is. I mean, you, I could be sitting down here and all of a sudden I'm like, I feel like at my angle, I'm looking fat. Or here on Zoom right now, like especially in class, I'm like, I feel like I look chubby from this angle. Let me, let me lower the camera. Let me move the camera. So like that trauma is still there. But luckily, I've been working on myself, and I'm, I'm like, you know what? I'm trying to. I want to be healthy for me, not for anyone else, but for me because I want to love myself and take care of myself the way I should. And that's how lately I've just been taking care of myself. And there's nothing more better than self love. I think self love is the best thing you could do instead of asking for it or expecting it from others. I feel like loving yourself for you and taking care of yourself for you is the best thing you can do. So all those 
all that trauma is still there. And like I said, I've heard it all before. I'm too fat. I'm too skinny. Are you eating? Are you bulimic? Are you anorexic? Are, what's, you're going to get diabetes if you keep eating. So it's all about just taking care of yourself, in my opinion. That's my way of seeing it with my journey, my life. No, yeah. That, and I didn't even get into the family thing. I literally, because yeah. that was a whole, like, people really just... That's where it starts. Yeah. And also people just love to give their opinion where it's not needed. Like people love to open their mouth. And like you, like, like you were saying, like, so before it was like, oh, you're eating too much. Like, blah, blah, blah. Why don't you do this? But then now it's like people look at me the, like, they'll say like, oh, like you look great. And I'm like, that's, I know you think that's a compliment, but it's, it's really, it's, it's just as bad as you went up to me and said, you look fat. Like it's the same <laughs> thing. Like it makes me feel the same. Or like, oh my God, someone said to me once like, oh, you like, you look so good and like, you look you look so happy because like you're skinny or something something like that and i was like oh lord have mercy I, deep inside you're just even... crying like you still feel like yeah. the fat kid in my opinion i feel like you yeah. still feel like no matter how much weight you lose no matter how much progress you do that fat kid and i'm not trying to look and say and say it bad way but like that mm-hmm. fat kid that we were it still lives in your head like i get yeah. so conscious when i eat now i'm like i used to i don't know how i used to do it well i'm like oh candy eat it now it's like <laughs> I really think about it. I'm like, do I need to eat the candy? Yeah. Do I want to eat the candy? To the point where I don't even want to look at it anymore. I'm like, I'm good. Like yeah. even eating, like there's still that trauma of like, what can I eat and what can I? Like it's, I feel like it's a whole ass dilemma to face on your own. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I think the word fat is super missing. I yeah. used to like, I used to be really sensitive to the word fat in general. So like, and I just kind of not came to terms. I just kind of like redefined it for myself and I think everybody should in mm-hmm. general because it's it's been used as like an insult. And yeah. it's not. It's just a description of a person. Mm-hmm. And I, it took me so long. It, it literally, I just changed the meaning of that word for myself like a couple months ago. Like mm-hmm. I used to be the person that's like, fat people shouldn't say that at all. Like blah, 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 blah. Like you should not. Blah. Like I was just like super sensitive about it because it's been used as an insult towards me. And so I was like, I don't want people to say that word at all, yeah. but it's just like, it's, it's not, I think <laughs> I, I know like body positivity, body neutrality, that's like a different story, but I just think like we need to redefine how we describe, like use the word fat to like describe people, like yeah. not using it yeah, as for like, sure. a weapon. Changing it, the, changing it the way you, you say it is different. Like, you mm-hmm. know how everyone's like, Oh, look, like now you have a fat ass and it's like, it's supposed to be a compliment, but still it's like that trauma still there. And you're like, yeah. wait, what mm-hmm. do you mean fat? Like someone says, Oh, Hey, like, Hey, like l- look at that fat ass. And you're like, wait, like, what do you mean? Like my me is in like, I'm looking fat or as in like my junk looking big. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And it's exactly. like, it's, it's all over the place. And then also like people, so like you eat a lot and you're like, oh, I feel so fat. Mm-hmm. Like, and it's like, I, like, I understand what you're saying. Like you feel full. Yeah. But like, just even just using it in that like context, you're literally saying like, oh, I feel bad. Mm-hmm. And you're using fat as a way to describe that. <laughs> I, I think it's been, I mean, I'll talk about more like a girl's experience like yeah. next episode, but like, I think uh, quarantine has helped me a lot oh, like yeah. tackle that word and tackle how I feel about myself because in college like you're surrounded by all your friends like they're always like talk to talk to talk to talk especially mm-hmm. like girls and stuff and it's just like body image always comes up like in, in like small ways like when we're getting ready to go out to like a club or a party or something and then they're like do I look fat in this dress like blah 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 and I'm just like I'm literally sitting there on the couch like no <laughs> <laughs> i know they don't mean it I, yeah. nobody means it intentionally it's just the way we've been conditioned in our society so like yeah. i don't if my friends are listening to this i don't even know if they listen to my podcast but if you're, it's not your fault it's just the way we've been conditioned yeah. as society as and we'll get into that right now and yes. it starts when we're kids go yeah, ahead <laughs> so okay well i've so been waiting for this no, really quickly really quickly before we do that let's mm-hmm. talk a little bit about the um justin baldoni ted talk Mm -hmm. Um, before we move on because then we're gonna spiral so really quickly um (laughs) we talked about it was it last female comedies was last week no oh two weeks ago yeah Yeah. so when we did the female comedies episode we talked about jane the virgin and kim mentioned that justin baldoni did a ted talk on masculinity Mm -hmm. she was like everyone should watch it and so i had never seen it so i watched it literally needs to be required in health classes like people need to watch this get exit questions i was like they need exit questions for this like to pay attention like it's (laughs) it's that helpful i think yes especially coming from somebody like him yeah who's been portrayed like these quote-unquote masculine roles like anyways 
No, but yeah, no, I agree. Um, I think I won't go too much into it because like mm-hmm. just go watch it because mm-hmm. genuinely I can't say anything that he didn't already say ten times better. Um, but yeah, it's just how like men and women and like how differently we're conditioned to talk about things, especially body image. Um, but yeah, anyway, so let's talk a little bit about ki- um, male body image in kids' television shows. So I think when you're a kid, you don't realize any of this. Mm-mm. You really don't. And then when I was researching for the episode, I would literally <laughs> was like spiraling. I was like, I cannot believe some of my favorite things basically hated me. Like, I don't know how to, exp- like, that's literally the only way to explain it. But um, so I found this article and it said fat shaming is the norm in our kids' favorite shows. And it's basically, it's like a mommy blog. And like this lady was like watching her kid. He was watching oh. Arthur and like, um, something like happened on the episode where Arthur was like I need to start working out or something and the mom was like let's turn that off and then she went to watch it by herself and there was a scene where Arthur is like huge and like Mm -hmm. people are like looking at him like as a circus like it's like a like a dream sequence or something and like people are looking at he's like at a circus and he's Mm -hmm. like on stage and people are like making fun of him um and she was like I can't believe that kids this is what we're telling kids especially fat little kids because I don't like well, your body when you're a kid, like, literally does not matter because it's going to change. Mm-hmm. So, like, to, these things should not be being implanted in kids' heads at all because it's so dangerous and so toxic. Um, but one part of the um, article that I thought was really interesting was that a 2017 study found that 84% of the top grossing kids' movies released between 2012 and 2015 promote weight stigma. A separate 2014 study published in the International Journal of Eating Disorders showed that 58.3% of youth-directed TV shows and cartoons also contain some kind of negative comment or incident related to a character's weight or appearance. Mm -hmm. That means literally half of the things, if not more, that you watched as a kid were literally, like, phallic. Yeah. Yeah. When you said that, I, like, I was, like, I don't, like, because he texted me, and I was, like, I didn't even notice that. Yeah. But it's true. Like, there's always, like, a side character that's, fat and they just that's their whole personality is that they're they fat. never get a love interest they never mm-hmm. get any kind of deep storyline they're always the butt of a joke mm-hmm. they're always hungry mm-hmm. they're always eating yeah they're always hungry or they're bumbling they can't fucking walk straight or something like yeah or they, yeah they make them they make them the dumb character per se they're lazy mm-hmm. like that's all they give all these like stereotypes to the larger character mm-hmm. always 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 and a lot of the times they're not even like i don't know how to explain it like they don't make the character like they never say like oh you're fat like explicitly yeah yeah yeah. it's in the like subtext Mm -hmm. which is so much worse but like every single disney channel show just think of one yeah there was a a, a, like plus size friend yeah and they weren't the main character they never were the main character they were literally just a plus size friend yeah literally and they're always and there hasn't even yeah uh, there has never been an actual plus size main Mm -hmm. character either thinking about it they always like no hate to any of these actresses, but it's like Demi Lovato, Selena Gomez. Um, we like trickled in there with Lapso Raven. Like she had that one episode. Oh, Lapso Raven really tackled it. Yeah, and they literally had a whole episode. It's yeah. like one of their most iconic episodes. And that, that was so helpful. I remember watching I, yeah. that when I was a kid and I was like, whoa. If all the Disney Channel shows did that, we would be in a very different place right now. <laughs> Society of the yeah. Channel <laughs> didn't make that back <laughs> Which episode was that one? It was the one with the fashion, the fashion show. Yeah, the fashion show where they like they make fun of Raven or is it Raven? Mm-hmm. Because they say that she's too fat to um to model. to model, but then she does it anyway, and she's like, "I love myself." Mm-hmm. Period. It makes me want to cry. I literally no, get emotional. It's, it's a really good it. episode. That's what Raven really tackled. I, that's what Raven also tackled racism and like yeah. so many, so many things. That show was great. I think it was like I, the most yeah. realistic one. Yeah, there was but, probably like, PLC in that writers' room. Oh, and not the yeah. other ones. And, but like on the flip side, there's n- like not really any plus size male leads. No, but there is. This is the one that I always think of. It's in in Sunny with the Chance. There was uh, the the I forgot his name. I think his the name blonde was one or something. The blonde one, and he was like the fatter character. Uh huh. Um, and yeah, all his jokes were about being fat. And then yeah. some, in Jesse, it was Bertram or eating. Yeah, all of Bertram's jokes are about being lit and lazy or Greedy. wanting to eat or like, and that that was I don't even I'm trying to think of was just a weird place. It was the uncle, wasn't it? The uncle who was the oh, the dad's brother. Yeah. Whoa. They redeemed it a little bit with the Shakira thing. I <laughs> yeah, love that, oh my but, gosh. Yeah. Uh, um, 
I'm trying to think of other examples. Good luck, Charlie. Um, what's the girl's name? Bridget Mendler's best friend. Oh my gosh! Well, yeah, all uh, the, all t- wasn't the it Disney character? Yeah. See, and like they always are like just there to. They're just. Oh my god! The way that we all, everyone owes an apology to Rainy Rodriguez. Every single person on this earth, like the way that they. Oh God, we won't even get into that. Yeah. Rainy Rodriguez, if you're listening, oh, no. we love you. Um, but like, it's a Ronnie um, Stan account here. We stand because, Ronnie. Yeah, and also like, a lot of the times when people like fat people are made the butt of the joke, it's like, oh, this is so funny because they're doing something. But it, you're like, okay, why is it funny? It's literally because they're fat. They're just doing something that could have happened to like a skinny person, and yeah, like, yeah, but it wouldn't be it, funny because they're skinny. Yeah, it, and still, like, it's still yeah. a lot of the jokes are like that. Okay, so. <laughs> I wanted to talk a little bit about when I was studying, like, um, studying, okay, relax. Um, when I was looking into the, um, the kinds of films and TV shows that affected me personally, um, I was trying to think of, like, what, what was, like, some of my favorite shows, and let's see if, or TV, or movies, um, and let's see if they had fat characters. And one that I kept coming across was an author that I literally could have said that was probably my favorite author back then. Um, but it was Roald Dahl, and he wrote Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Matilda, The Witches, like, literally, like, staples of, like, children's film and TV. And this man hated fat people. But I did not realize it until I started, like, really, like, looking at it yesterday. And I was like, oh, my, like, he truly, truly thought fat people were disgusting. And it is clear in his writing. So here I am with my little books and my post-it notes because I just, I, I was looking at the scene, the movie scenes, and I was like, yes, it's still evident. Yeah, yeah. But I wanted to go to the root source. Like that's source. nasty. Yeah. Oh my god. I wanted to go to the root source. I never, I've never read his books. No, this this was a box set. Like it was all his yeah. books, and so I was like obsessed with his books. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I still like I I appreciate these characters. I love these characters, but like. I never realized how fat phobic they were. There so, like, are so many authors are so problematic. Yeah. So the first one is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So there's two of them. Um, but the one I'm, I don't really remember the older one. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit more. Because the one that I was obsessed with was the Johnny Depp one. Um, 2008, I believe it came out. And there, it happens in both movies. There's a scene where uh, one of the kids, he is much larger than the other kids. Augustus. Augustus Gloop. Yeah. Just the name alone. Um and the so basically throughout the story like each of these kids has like one like i guess everyone flaw. everyone knows what <laughs> charlie and Jack are no but like i need to explain like oh that's true wait and everyone knows okay yeah, i was like why are you explaining the whole thing just explain but i wasn't gonna say anything i was like yeah okay the, so, what about the so i don't know if you guys have heard of this really underground like movie <laughs> super indie <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> did not have a childhood so what is this about oh, yeah <laughs> i don't know if these were the original lyrics in the original one i don't remember i know they changed it for the remake but they the little songs so i i wanted to look and see what the book said because they're still in the book like he literally writes out these like the lyrics know, the, the lyrics of them so there's no music to it but like i started reading it and i was like it's a long song well, he had to a lot to get out this man so i'm not gonna read the whole thing but the parts that i was shocked by was so it's like Augustus Gloop, the great big greedy nincompoop. How long could we allow this beast to gorge and guzzle, feed and feast on everything he wanted to? And however long this pig might live, we're positive he'd never give even the smallest bit of fun or happiness to anyone. Um, oh. They basically like call, are calling him a brat for, because like yeah. the reason he like falls into the chocolate river because he was too like gluttonous to yeah. stop himself because like J- Johnny Depp said not to eat the chocolate and he did it. Because he's fat, and like, why wouldn't he want to eat the chocolate? And then, um, I'm not calling a child a pig. No, yeah, no, no, no. You had you had me at pig and beast. Yeah, and then he says, "This revolting boy, of course, was so unutterably vile, so greedy, foul, and infantile. He left the most disgusting taste in our mouths." Um, and then whatever this this part is in the song, I remember this. Um, and then this is about how they kill him. <laughs> like, it's very yeah. graphic. Because, like, they die in this book, essentially. They, yeah. they never come back. In the movie, you see them after, but he killed the, these kids. Um, and yeah, it's just about how he's greedy. And even in, like, when they first introduce these characters, they're, because, like, these books have drawings. And they're, like, I don't know. All the characters are a little funky looking. Like, the drawings are, like, sketches. Mm-hmm. But the way they introduce, so, like, each of the kids went with their parents, and, like, they just, here it is. Um, 
Gra- the grandma of um, Charlie, she calls her like the mom revolting, and the son. They do that repulsive. in the movie too. Yeah, like they're just completely disgusted by these people. Yeah, like full on <sighs> disgusted. I remember that movie, and I was like, "All right, let's chillax." Like, yeah, like yeah, I thought like because I think as a kid when I watched it, I was just like, "Oh, it's because like he has like chocolate all over his face." No, oh, they were yeah. talking about him being fat. Like, who? Okay. It makes sense. <laughs> It's like a I, joke covered behind another joke. Yeah. Also, mm-hmm. like, I completely would have... Which happens a lot to fat characters. Yeah. And, like, that's it. He's the first one to go, and we never see him again. Like The, the fat would... kid dies first. Yep. Um, and even, like, Violet's, like, I guess, punishment for, like, being, like, too competitive or whatever, she turns into a huge blueberry. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't know, God. I and wonder then, what that's about. Yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> like, how how dare she be larger? Like, yeah. I don't know. Um, and the irony in that one was because she was supposed to be a skinny, petite uh, yeah. fitness. Wasn't she, like, a jogger, a track star? So all yeah, she was getting like, fat is, like, the worst thing that could happen to her. Yeah. My eyes started twitching. Yeah, I don't know. And then, <laughs> so I was like, let me look at some other ones. And, like, they're in all his works. But the other one that I wanted to mention was in Matilda. This used to be one of my favorite movies. And, like... I, I used to joke, like, literally, I, t- I told my family that for my birthday this year, I wanted the cake from Matilda, because all I remember from that scene was that huge cake looking delicious. <gasps> oh, my gosh, that, oh, my gosh. Yeah, and then I went back, and I read this part, and I was like, oh, my God. So, in Matilda, this one I will explain, because I feel like people don't remember Matilda that much, but the principal's, like, evil, and she hates yeah. little kids, and, like, this kid sneaks in um, and eats a piece of her chocolate cake that she has. We won't even get into the character of the principal because that is a whole other thing. But um, the <laughs> kid eats a little slice of chocolate cake. Fine. It's a child. Like, literally, what do you expect? And she punishes him by making him sit in front of the entire school and eat an entire cake. Oh, yeah. Dude, I remember we had to watch Matilda in, like, elementary school. And I literally was like, I walked I walked out of the room. Because yeah. I knew what scene was coming. And I literally was like, can I go to the restrooms? Because I didn't want, because I was the only fat kid in yeah. class to my to my recollection so i was like i just don't want to be a part of this while this, this is happening scene, and i watch it back it's horrendous it's, yeah this is so it's disgusting humiliating like this it's such first of all it's a child a child should not have to be punished for literally being a child and doing things yeah. that childs do um that child. kids do you know you saying childs um and yeah it's just like an entire chapter of like how like everyone is so disgusted that he is able to eat this whole cake and i'm like you're like to this author mr rold he's probably dead i don't care but like um i just i cannot imagine hating fat people so much and being so disgusted by them that like you write kids books where it they, like you are ingraining in the minds of these kids that like being fat will be, get you punished and will make it's you, like, like yeah it's like it's like warning kids saying hey um, if you're fat this is gonna happen to you like, yeah don't, don't be fat Mm-hmm. Um, so I, yeah, it's just, and it's not just Roll Doll, it's every kid's go back, watch one of your favorite movies as a kid, and yeah, and every like movies. every single like um movie that like when somebody's like power's gonna take away or like they're revealed like to be true, like a lot of times they're the ugly characters are fat, yeah, like the evil characters are fat, so it's like anyway, yeah, so in um. It starts in kids shows, which is like, mm-hmm. you can't really escape that. Like if, if you're a child and this is what you're seeing as a kid, that's going to stay with you mm-hmm. until the day you die. So it's going to take a lot to unlearn that. And I just think we need to stop showing things yeah, like this to kids. Yeah, because it's super unconscious. Like, I don't think anybody, like when you're watching it, really, like when you're in elementary school, like looking at the side characters that are like fat and being like, oh. Yeah. That's like a dig at me being fat. Yeah. And also like in... I don't know if this was in, I don't remember if it, this is in his book too, but like The Witch is like the most recent remake. First of all, everyone was super mad because like the whole design of The Witches was already problematic in itself. But like the one of the characters, he's like fat when he's like, before he's turned into a rat. And then when he's turned into a rat, the character design of the fat is like, he's still, I mean, <laughs> the character design of the rat is still fat. And like half of the jokes from that point on are about the rat not being able to fit in like certain oh pipes God. or like he got stuck under the thing because like he was too big and i was like like i hate when movies do that yeah. and i like now it's easier to notice and so i'm glad that i'm able to notice it now because i can be like yeah well you guys thought this was funny but it's not funny i wonder what switch like flips in middle schoolers brains where they're like i'm just gonna be nasty to 
people that are not like me. Know. Like, I don't know what happens in people's heads. Because I would, I don't know, like, I was never really bullied about my weight, like, to my face. Like, it wasn't, but I definitely heard, like, whispers and shit. Like, I'm not fucking stupid. Mm-hmm. But, like, I, I don't know. It's super weird. But I definitely, I mean, I'll talk about it more next week. Yeah, I mean, so. I definitely was. Yeah. But, like, obviously, I don't. Yeah, I think men, is it's, like, more face-to-face. Yeah. For sure. Like, yeah, because definitely. men are more confrontational in general. And I think it, yeah. that's another parallel because women, it's a lot more sneaky and like whispery and like, but like men will literally fucking call you shit to your face yes. and like make your life a living hell for what? For literally what nothing. do you get out of that? For sir? No and I think it, the go- worst part was also like in middle school was when you're in the locker rooms. I never wanted yeah. to change with anybody there. Never. No. I was, I would always, I think I was the only, only kid in my period who would go to the restroom and change her and even going to the restroom and changing there was already like traumatizing because it was like damn like what do I have to hide why am I going yeah. somewhere else and yeah, I was just and physically I could never be like those guys who would walk around with a shirtless just the whole time like hey no. coach what's up like what the heck literally like I still I haven't like taken off my shirt like at the pool or at the beach room in literally like 15 years oh I, that's why I don't go to the beach the yeah pool. and like I love water <laughs> yeah, but yeah I just will not do that <laughs> like that is the trauma that these not even just these film and tv shows but like this society mm-hmm. like caused me that like I still to this day I'm 22 or about to be 22 years old I should not care about this but I literally cannot mm-hmm. like physically even just wearing like tank tops like I like the entire time I'm like closing the shirt because I feel very like uh conscious yeah. about it and like it's so frustrating because I know, like, I know, like, I have no reason to be thinking like this, but it still is it's there. It's just, like, it's always going to be in the back of your head. Yeah. And it takes time to get over it. I will say, like, it, it's just, like, training your mind and yeah. stuff, and everybody moves at their own pace. But, like, be forgiving with yourself when you're dealing with that kind mm. of stuff, I think. Um, because I used to be the same way. But, like, just know it can get better. Everybody just moves at their different pace yeah. and don't feel bad that you're still feeling the trauma that you feel from a child. Yeah. Like, absolutely and for sure, just don't, don't, don't ever compare yourself to others, like other mm-hmm. body types. Like obviously, mm-hmm. why don't I look mm-hmm. like her? Why don't I look like him? Like I'm trying, I'm just trying to look like him. And it's like, yeah. no, mm-hmm. everyone's body is literally built different. Like some people yeah. can lose the weight faster than others. And that's the comparing is what sucks. Yeah, exactly. And I think that like that, I feel like, correct me if I'm wrong but like that changed all of our mindsets when we stopped complaining comparing our bodies to other people yeah and like started living for ourselves that's what changed and that's how our relationship with our bodies like changed yeah and then when you see progress for yourself that's when you start admiring yourself and going wow like I really I went from looking like this to looking like this mm-hmm. it's all self it's all in self-love for sure yeah yeah but yeah well that goes ties a little bit into um the next thing that we kind of want to talk about um which is like the other side of male body image in film and TV, which is this hyper, like, masculine, yeah. um, r- six pack abs um, body type, which is very um, prevalent in like superhero films and that kind of thing. Okay, so. Mm-hmm. Well, I want to start ahead. with like this quote I have because I wrote like a paper about masculinity <laughs> and I thought Wait, this quote. Hold on. The title is. He made it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, our professor Leroy Dawkins points that we didn't have a creative title. So then go. Okay, so <laughs> the title of this essay is masculinity, but it's mask written as in like M A S K. So like mask. Masculinity. When you oh, read the wow. S, when you no, read like the it. essay, it makes sense. Okay. <laughs> I just thought it was funny because, like, I was like looking at it, like masculinity. Yeah. It's Honestly, clever. I was so proud of it when I came up with it because, like, I never am good at like creating titles. Like, it sh- creating the name for this fucking podcast was like a whole trip. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> it, it, it's hard for me to come with titles, and when I did that one, I was like, oh, this is my best work. Anyways, masculinity. Um, oh wow. Mm-hmm. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Good essay, to be honest. Um, but this quote, I think, like, really sets it up. Um, just, like, because the body image in relation to masculinity is, it's it's just, it's intersected. You know what I mean? It's a part of the layers. And then this book, it's called American Film. It's probably, like, I'm, I literally bought the textbook. It was my textbook in film theory, but I bought it after I finished the class because it's that good. It's just interesting if you're interested in, like, like sociology and like how people like react to media and like communications like it's just interesting and it helps a lot with this podcast like I definitely read it a lot when we're like preparing for this Mm -hmm. podcast but this quote um says American society teaches and fosters certain types of behavior in men 
the ones commonly thought of masculine in parentheses, aggression, strength, leadership, lack of emotion in order to maintain and reinforce patriarchal privilege. Mm -hmm. And that I feel like is like in regards to body image, like absolutely like upholds like patriarchal privilege because like when you think of like a superhero body like muscular they can defend america they can defend the world and like you know it it, i think that's how like i thought about it in regards to like the topic we're talking about it's just like people somehow idealize or match people having muscles and like a washboard abs and whatever the fuck can lift a car like whatever um into like the identity of being a male yeah i think that's just weird yeah so okay i don't know what i don't know why but like i never like i I never saw superhero movies and was like oh i wish i looked like that because i just they were like Mm -hmm. i don't know i guess i'm barely like older so like i guess if i rewatched it i'd be different but they were like grown they were like 30 so i was like i have time i don't know so it never like affected me what affected me more was like movies with like teenagers mm. where like like high school movies were like the it was the like jock. the full yeah and like the nerdy kid was st- still skinny though skinny or like they're there it's like a skinny nerd and then the yeah. fat nerd yeah literally spider-man homecoming like and also, Whoa. hold on, before we, apparently, like, okay, so the character Ned in Spider-Man, um, the new ones, is, like, Tom, Tom Holland's, uh, Peter Parker's best friend, and he's just, like, kind of nerdy, he's just kind of there for a good time, he's comedic relief, mm-hmm. as fat characters usually are, but apparently, like, in the new one, this is just rumored, and I don't know, but he lost a lot of weight, and, like, recently, which, like, okay, like, he lost a lot of weight, and Dude. apparently it's because he's got, he has, like, a villain role, in this new one so it's like that's weird that he as, has to ha- quote unquote has to lose weight uh-huh. to play the as player. soon as he gets a bigger part that has powers involved they're like well because i don't i don't know what went on behind the scenes i don't know if marvel told it's like a, to. it's like a rebrand for him as the villain yeah. Yeah. and that's just like rumor we don't know why it, that, that's he, just what i've been yeah, hearing yeah. um again i wouldn't Mar- be surprised because like come on on johnny had to like get super ripped for his own yeah yeah like chris pratt yeah like in Parks he's and a Rec, big like, example yeah, yeah. parts and rec like he was like pudgy and like chubby and like that was his role in the that show was he his was role like in the, show. the lovable cuddly like fat guy yeah basically exactly um, and then he got super ripped to play Starlight. peter quill yeah Who, not me saying peter quill Okay, God, queen, queen of knowing the names. <laughs> um, I loved Guardians of the Galaxy when it came out. Yeah, me too. I still do like it. Chris yeah. Pratt. Okay, but um, the thing, like, I don't know. Like, it's a lot. Uh, Star-Lord and um, Andy from Parks and Rec have a lot of the same characteristics. But, like, the thing that was, like, I don't know how to explain this. It's like, just, like, because, like, they have similar types. That's why, like, I feel like Chris Pratt was, like, quote-unquote perfect for the role. Yeah. But uh, Star-Lord has, superhero. like, yeah, Star-Lord has, like, sex appeal. And, like, mm. he's a little, like, edgy. And, like, he's rugged is, like, the thing. Yeah. But he can't be rugged and be, like, chubby. Like, that doesn't, that's not superhero I don't material. think, I don't think if Chris no. Pratt still looked like how he looked in Parks and Rec as Star-Lord, I don't think it would have affected the story at all. I would have liked it. Yeah. And, like, since we're on the topic of... It makes of, sense for, like, his character type, I think. I mean, yeah. like, it doesn't matter what his body looks like. I don't think it matters what anybody's body looks like <laughs> in really relation does. to being a superhero. Especially when they have, like, magical powers. Yeah. That one really don't make sense to me. I'm like, okay, so why do they have to have muscles? Is so there... fat people can't have magic? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, you're telling me I can't be out here making, like, yeah. the universe. You can tell me I, I'm Doctor... I can't be Doctor Strange. Yeah. And not be fat? Like, what the fuck? Oh my God. What the hell does that equate to? Like, Well, I guess, like, uh, Doctor Strange, like, again, side character. But Doctor Strange is, um, like, was he his friend? I don't know, Wong? He was, like, a side to character. To be honest, I did not watch Doctor Strange. He's also an Endgame. And, like, Avenger. Okay. I'm just not a huge Bennett. There's nothing he did to me. <laughs> I didn't think he did. Like, Bennett at Cumberbatch. I just, like, I'm not, I'm not on the train that everyone else was on. I... Remember when he was I've like only seen him on Doctor deal? Strange. That's it. Yeah. Doctor well, Strange, Benedict. That's it. 
I think I mentioned this before, but I was on like Supernatural Doctor Who. Mm-hmm. Yes. Sherlock Tumblr when that was a thing. So like that, like I did force myself to watch Sherlock. So that's where I knew him from. Um, I just love the magical Marvel heroes. So mm-hmm. I love Doctor Strange. I love Scarlet Witch. Like I just think there's someone more interesting than rich guy who has not a um, suit. Like I literally don't care. Iron Man's my favorite, but like I fair, know that's but fair, fair. Yeah. Um, I'm, if they had a magical character that was fat, I would cry. Literally, I would cry. I just think, yeah, let's get some fat superheroes. But it doesn't even need to be fat. They could just be like, like normal, normal average size, body. average size. Like, yeah, not normal, regular. but like, like just. Like, well, yeah. like for example, Tony Stark. Tony Stark, when he first started, I don't think he was built built like super no, like really uh, hot, was. right? Like in the first, at least for the first movie, he didn't seem buff or anything. He seemed he seemed average, in my opinion. And I think yeah. it was like towards the end game era is when he you started seeing him more built. That's when, but it's like it's a suit. So what? A fat person's not gonna fit in that Iron Man suit? But That's also like there. like Captain America. Like oh, he was so like tiny. He wanted to fight for America, yeah. but oh, he was too little. <laughs> So let's give him abs, and now he can defend yeah, America. Let's like, him. Yeah, <laughs> let's. They would rather mutate them. Men will rather get mutated than go to therapy. Like literally, like they do not want. Like I don't know. They all have the same body type. Yeah. And, okay. Also, another thing that Kim and I were talking about briefly before this was um, Fat Thor in Avengers Endgame, where like <gasps> oh my gosh, yeah, Fat Thor. So essentially, like Thor, like what? Why did he? It, he gained weight because like he was he was depressed. He was depressed. depressed about something that happened in Ragnarok. But he lost, or because he had lost. His whole, like, like, everyone died. Oh, yeah. Everyone died. <laughs> <laughs> something like, happened in I was Ragnarok. Like, he got, something happened to him, and he just got His, sad. like, entire planet died. They killed his brother. They killed his dad. Like, everyone was dead. Everyone was dead. So, yeah. like, he just Matt spiraled, Damon. and, like, <laughs> Matt Damon was dead. Um, and so Thor was not okay. But the thing that I was uncomfortable with was when I was watching it in the theater. This was, like, what, two years ago? They would make yeah, a joke. Yeah, it wasn't even that long ago. They would make a joke about his weight, and I'd be like, and the entire theater was like, thought it was the funniest thing ever. And I was like, I don't. I must have blocked that out. Yeah, no, I, it's, it's not like, there's so many fat jokes. And like, even the merchandise about it, like, they call him Bro Thor. Because for some reason, I thought the, like, they made Funko Pops out of that character. And I thought they said Fat Thor. Like, I was convinced they said Fat Thor. Um, it's like that's Mandela what, effect. Yeah, everyone was calling him that on social media, like, <laughs> yeah. Fat Thor. And, um, but no, it's just bro Thor, but like even the Funko Pop, he has a slice of pizza in his hand and like, he was like drinking a lot of beer, like in those scenes. Yeah, it's like, like a beer belly, whatever. It was like, that was like, I guess, like. How did he like lose the weight? I don't remember. Like, how magically. Did he I don't think he, I don't, he didn't lose it, at least for a good well, couple of scenes. He stayed being fat. Yeah. Like for, yeah. for a he's few scenes. Also, yeah, he's also, I guess, still bro Thor in like Endgame, but they're in the leaked pictures for because he's in the next, um, like, the Thor movie, Thor 3, or whatever, he's skinny Love again. and Thunder. Yeah, he's yeah. skinny again, so. I feel like they have the opportunity. If they had kept it fat, oh, I would have loved that so much. Yeah, but it's but Chris no. Hemsworth, so. But I don't think he would have had an issue with that. I mean, he wasn't, he didn't Maybe actually, the moms but he that didn't actually get fat for the role. Oh, no, I know. Yeah. It was like a fat just, No, it was obviously, it was a, it was so fake, like, it was like, the, yeah. he even had the freaking, the yeah, beer just, belly, per se. Just making a caricature of fat people. Let's stop doing that. And like everyone thought it was so funny. I was like, this is what we is think it- comedy is. Okay. <laughs> Didn't we just like hype up WandaVision because it was Marvel and now we're dragging? I it? listen. Well, okay. What does that mean that you sent me? The one the one that um with the from fucking Oh, 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 oh. Where did I even send you that? I think it was a text. No, it might have been Instagram. Let me check real quick. It was like, oh no, it was a tweet that I sent to Kim. And it was like, it was recent because you don't answer my text. So, yes, I do. No. Um, oh, here it is. Oh, no, it's not. Wait. Oh, yeah. Everything's problematic. Let's get you to, let's get you the ability to criticize media and still enjoy it. It's a scene from, I don't even know what this is. It's always, That's, uh, it's always sunny. Yeah. Um, oh, this tweet has been deleted. <gasps> Screenshot it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good tweet. But yeah, I think that's honestly what we struggle with a lot on the podcast. Like, I still love Charlie on the Top. I can Factory. still talk shit about something for like hours and still like be like, I liked it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just like that's a that's okay. Yeah. Normalize. Normalize hating things and loving them at the same time. And yeah. loving them. Oh, the toxicity. Emotions. 
Yeah. Having complex, <laughs> having complex emotions. Like I literally, like yeah, I love Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Am mm-hmm. I excited to see the prequel? Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> Am I, now I can in, now I can't think about it the same anymore. Yeah, sorry. I hope like, I didn't oh, ruin it. That movie has a lot of problems. It's like, I don't, like, I, we can't do anything. We can't change it. Like, yeah, I, we're not in a position where we can, like, actually have power to, like, change anything. No. Oh, I meant the specific that scene. In- oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it already happened. And, like, yeah. yeah, critique it. And, like, that's the thing. Like, you can't, like, let one thing, like, ruin the whole message because there's bigger things beyond that character. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Just, like, that part of the story was not done well, but you know, the overall thing of the movie. I mean, I don't really know what the message of Charlie and Chuck is. What is great. the message? Like, anyone can be rich? Pure like, imagination? I don't know. If you're no. poor, someone with money's gonna help you out. <gasps> so maybe let's not use Charlie and Yeah, okay, Matilda. Matilda. Yeah, yeah. Matilda. Uh, what is the message of Matilda? Matilda? Movie. I literally... Scarlet Witch. The, the origins of Scarlet Witch. Yeah, the, <laughs> literally. I don't even remember what Matilda is about. Like What? Like, like what's I mean, the she's an or- one? she's not an orphan, but like she, I don't know. I her mean, family is mean. Her, her family so hates her. Little... Yeah, it's horrible. Miss Honey, right? Miss Honey. Miss, Miss Honey, Honey is, is a lifesaver. Yeah. yeah no? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay, so good will come to people that deserve it. Teachers are nice. Like I don't know. <laughs> well, maybe they weren't. That <laughs> if your parents are good, do you have your teacher adopt you? If you know the morals of either of these books, please let us know because we don't know. Anyways, um, dating shows, Ugh. reality TV. I have been waiting to talk about this one. Turn it the fuck up. I think it's so harmful, especially because dating is hard enough as yeah. it is. And then when you're literally only showing, like on The Bachelor is going to be like my main example. Yeah, that's If you look at all of those fucking, if you literally go on ABC's like, uh, website. website and like Absolutely. look at all those contestants they, they all look the same the exact same body type exact same body different type. like maybe there's never there might be like three big, that are skinny yeah mm-hmm. there's never i don't think i've ever seen a plus size or average no. size um contestant or, like, yeah it's, it's wild it's like no. where are the big boys at like what Exactly. And it's like, it's just perpetuating this idea that you're not attractive if you are any other body type than uh, muscular and like, or maybe like tall and slender. And it, which is so dumb because people do, are attracted yeah. to fat people. Like, I don't understand where this, it's literally just in the media because, like, what's like a fat celebrity that people like are obsessed with? A man. Like Seth, okay, yeah, that's the problem too because you don't have one. No, <laughs> I do. Okay. There's a few. All my friends love Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen. They yeah. love Seth Rogen. He does not look like a Bachelor contestant. No. So, but like, who cares? Like, I don't understand why the Bachelor contestants all have to look like the most basic. What did you Google? <laughs> what did you know? <laughs> she Googled the fat actors. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and there's just a bunch of white men. And I was just like, this is not the right. I, I don't think he's. This is not the right thing to Google. Also, let's not talk about how people fucking just write Jonah Hill off as a fat actor and, yeah. like, completely, like, torment him about him losing weight and everything. Like, I yeah. just can't. Or, like, people... Oh, my God. Twitter. Like, literally Twitter. Like, people were... I remember he, like, lost weight and then gained it again. People were like, oh, Jonah Hill's fat again. I'm like, literally... Shut up. Go do your homework. <laughs> I know. Why like, are you what? commenting on people's bodies? <laughs> Who cares? No. Like, I think that's honestly, like, the biggest thing. It's like, literally, yeah. it is none of your business to comment on other people's bodies. Just don't. Just don't. Like, Especially just, I, when, like... You just can't, like, for, like when you're thinking about yourself, it's like, how can you judge upon some other people's bodies when it's like, when do you even love yourself? So I feel like that's a big uh, a hypocritical movement yeah. to yeah. do right there. And also, like, Love Island is, like, one of my favorite TV shows ever to be existence. Just TV shows, not even reality No, TV? I fucking love that show so much. I think oh it's brilliant. I love it. Wow. Um, but one of my, like, things that has always made me uncomfortable watching that show is that, like, they're always basically naked. They're always mm-hmm. like, especially in the beginning, you get introduced to all the women in bikinis and you get introduced uh, to all the men in like Is that the one their... on Netflix? It's on Hulu. It's on Hulu. The and it's a British, it's a British dating show. Is Love is Mind the one where they're in the pods? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's a that cool... they had some fat people on there, but they didn't make it further than just like them in the back but i mean that's not the show's fault that's the people's yeah. fault that's the internalized fat well, over there. yeah because like, but the they don't know that tried... they're fat 
That's, That's the whole saying. point. Like, <gasps> oh my god. Wait, wait, wait. So the, they That's, didn't make it far. Like they didn't get. No, they didn't focus on their stories after because I don't think they made it out like with the relationship. Oh. I mean, but that's a thing also like in love is blind they asked each other what they looked like body type wise I, i'm pretty sure i remember somebody being like i hope or somebody said either that or somebody said like i hope she's not fat or something like that or oh like i God. like they were talking about their, their ideal body type why <laughs> keep it to yourself keep it to yourself the way that you said they said that with I'm their whole chest sure. on t- I'm television i'm pretty sure they did I, i'm sure they did because i, I remember being like skip <laughs> what i don't um, like it because people people will literally just say like oh like i don't date fat people or i don't mm-hmm. find fat people attractive or oh no that bitch is fat like what like what i just does think that it's weird to date? completely rule out somebody because of their and, body type yeah somebody because of their body type because of their race like i think that's just weird and, I think and the funny part is like, internalize like fat phobia internalized racism mm-hmm. like it just brings, and the funny like, part is sometimes the fat the fat person could be way more attractive than some other person mm-hmm. in my opinion mm-hmm. you could always it's always like the opposite exactly fat and does not make you ugly fat does not make you yeah. ugly. 100 percent. and like i've always like i love reality tv and i'm just like i've always been fat my entire life so like i'm just like sitting there like oh, i love these shows and i'm like there's never gonna be anybody that looks like me on these shows Nobody and it sucks. makes me and it makes me feel not deserving of love mm-hmm. and it makes all other fat people feel not deserving of love or like, anybody that doesn't have a fucking walkboard ass so and muscles and that's just so fucked because everybody is deserving of love yeah. and like i think it absolutely like these dating shows and like all this media absolutely boils down to dating life mm-hmm. because and like, i think that also changes your mentality if you're if you're seeing that um only these good attractive fit people date each other does that mean that you cannot date someone who's uh built strong and tough like are you only supposed to like people who look like that are you not allowed exactly. to look at people who don't look like that who are bigger mm-hmm. or plus size yeah it, it's so rough dating dating mm-hmm. is really do be rough and especially like <laughs> dating do be rough Can no really it, it, it's true and especially <laughs> it's like a fat person like I'm always like super insecure whenever because I don't I've never dated somebody that's like plus size. It's just never and I think that's also like uh plus size men also have their own internalized fat phobia. Yeah. So they don't want to date another fat girl. Maybe. Fat girl. Not and this is like a generalization. This is not talking about every single yeah. person on the earth. Like that's just not fair. But like I've noticed that. Like and I feel weird when I date all the men I've dated have been smaller than me. And like, it, it absolutely like affects me, especially when like you get intimate, mm-hmm. like <laughs> nobody tells you how to fucking have sex when you're fat. <laughs> like nobody tells <laughs> you. And I, that's why I want to start another podcast about like lifestyle mm-hmm. and like that kind of stuff, because like, I want somebody who has, is currently living this, like yeah. talk about it. And like, I well, definitely, and also th- Thinking about it that way in couples, do you, I don't. I don't know if it's just me thinking. Of, I can't think right now. But do I don't know if you noticed, but like a lot of times the fat couples are the ones who date each other. I don't think you've ever seen a fat person date a skinny person on a, on a show. That's true. Trisha That's very true. I don't think <laughs> they're real people. <laughs> oh, oh on wait, a show, on a show. Oh, on a TV show. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They it's, always like, or if not, it'll be like. I don't think I've ever seen like two. Like it'll be like a a fat guy like with Mercedes like, in in Glee, like she has. She did she, Sam though. Yeah, yeah, that's like my my thing. Mm-hmm. But I think it's weird because she she left her boyfriend. I forget his name. I'm so sorry. But he was also like a a football player. But he was like plus size. Oh my god! I yeah, right? he wasn't and he like treated this, her this, so yeah. well. He encouraged her to go chase her dreams, and then she left him for skinny white boy Sam. As much that as was I'm, the writer's fault. As much as I'm, I'm yeah, it's obviously it's not Mercedes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she had no choice. <laughs> and uh, it, like, it's just so. <laughs> Sorry, you totally. No, me. I meant I didn't mean it's Mercedes fault. I meant Amber Riley. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> she had no choice what the writers told her to do. <laughs> the way that we completely <laughs> like I know that these characters don't have yeah, their yeah. own will. <laughs> like, yeah. They're not real. <laughs> <laughs> not a reality. Yeah, no, show. no. But yeah, I thought thought that was weird that she left this great man who literally was like encouraging her to do her dreams and reminding her. That was like my main thing I remember. Was he a bully though? Yeah, mm. but he mm. he's reformed because he loves he would, like, Mercedes. Slash you 
after he didn't do anything to them while they were together. That's cool. Okay. Okay, listen, Glee doesn't make sense. I know. <laughs> so, but what I'm saying is, like, he reminded her that, like, she was a star and she was worthy. And she yeah. is just as good as Rachel, if not fucking better. Like, and I, and Sam just came back and was like, I love you. And then she was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Which, like, to be fair, okay. I am, like, a Sam and Mercedes yeah. Sam. Like, I absolutely love them together. But I just, they did that man so dirty. Yeah. That was my point. The Great part of Glee podcast. <laughs> you have to mention that every time you talk about Glee. Um, I can't believe we had a Glee podcast. But yeah, back to the reality TV dating shows. I just, yeah. Well, I was just going to say, like, I literally, if I went on ABC's website right now and I applied to be The Bachelor and I was the best contestant out of all, <laughs> not saying that I'm the best, but I'm saying, like, if I was the most interesting candidate, I, first of all, I, I'm sure I could stir up some drama on reality TV, but like, they would never pick me because I'm sure they asked for a shirtless picture. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Like I'm sure if we pulled it up that, right that now. has to be part of the part of um what do you call application it application um, process. No, that's the word. What's that word? Um, application. Real, like no, 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 like the real. Oh, oh okay, really yeah, said. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah, they all always are shirtless. I would never want to be a bachelor clip. for the record, for multiple reasons, but like yeah, or a contestant either. <laughs> that sounds so good. I think yeah but i remember are you the one that's another dating show i really really would liked. you wait really quick before, would you ever want to be the bachelorette you yeah. should really yeah i would love to <laughs> would abc never. ring my line i'm i feel like right now i'm in such a good place that like even if i was the first like fat person on the bachelorette show i could take the hate i really don't give a fuck you, what people say about me abc came would make a good bachelorette yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, like, pretty logical, but I'm also really dramatic. Yeah, she also cries a lot, so, like, I feel like that, like, good for reality TV. Yeah. Like, you, I'm and not it's ugly. not even acted, no. it's real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite beautiful, in, in fact. Our, our audition for the, the best. Send us to ABC, everybody. So, what's the other one? The Paradise? Love Paradise? The one where they're on an island. And the, the where the beat, did. well. The leftover one. Oh, yeah, so it's, yeah, the ones that are like it's like a continuous of like the people the who didn't make oh, it. Oh, Bachelor in Paradise, cut. I think. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. I would never be on that one. But. Okay, that's the thing. I wouldn't want to be on a reality TV dating show that requires me being in a fucking bikini all the time because I've never worn a bikini in my goddamn life <laughs> <laughs> ever. I don't enjoy that at okay. all. So that's that's why I would say The Bachelor out of all of them because that's the only one that kind of like you can like you can go a whole season yeah that's the only way you can go but if you're season. always like the the other ones like the so like my family religious bachelor watchers whatever bachelor bachelorette bachelor in paradise this whatever sucks by the way I don't know but anyway so they always I remember my brother was complaining about how like so like when it's a bachelor and they're all girl contestants there's at least one where they're all in bikinis one mm-hmm, challenge mm-hmm. and then when it's a girl there's at least one where all the guys have to fight each other and they're yeah, shirtless. Yeah. Always. They literally season. have to physically fight each other. I don't want Why? that. Why? And also, even if you don't want me as your bachelorette, I know, <laughs> that, I know that ABC, I know that you're having a lot of trouble with the Chris Harris situation. Like, I, I understand that. I think it's time for a revamp. And I think I could be a good can- candidate for you. I am unemployed. I have been watching your show religiously for like ever and I definitely can bring a Gen Z flair to your show and update it for the much needed update it needs. You know what I mean? Period. As you should. Sure. This just turned into your audition for the Absolutely. I, Honestly, this I is your real right now. Like yeah. if you look on my Instagram page and you look up oh my like God. on my Instagram page, I have a Instagram where my caption is ABC, please. Yeah, because it was like the grow. Oh my yeah, God. I would actually think. Yeah. I still stand by it. I think I would. I think I would absolutely turn <laughs> that show around. I it's think for on episode. ABC. I think your your gate into it is like you first. You need to be a, a contestant on the on the Bachelor. I'm not gonna get me though. No, but that's how they aren't they all like that? Don't you have to be a, a contestant and then they pick you as the Bachelor? Right? Yeah, yeah. So anyway. well, sometimes Matt James didn't. Matt, the guy that's currently Bachelor was supposed to be on the last season, but they because of the. the the BLM movement, they just decided to fast track him because they were going to pick him anyways, I guess. That's what they say, at least, mm, allegedly. I, but he was like a friend of um, a Bachelor. Like, oh, wait, my mom explained this to me. He got fans because like TikTok or something. Mm, no, he was he was friends with Tyler Right, but Cameron. didn't they like make videos on TikTok? That's what my brother said. I'm not on that side of TikTok. Oh, well, so, he is. And he's like, I'm like, not on straight TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I didn't say that. Uh, but I did, his TikTok did come up on my 40 page because it was funny. 
He's actually funny he outside sent of me the... something. It was like him. He made a diorama of yeah. like a Star Wars scene out of gummies. And I was like, yeah, I was like, I literally what? sent him and I was like, I cannot believe this is the current bachelor because he has like no personality on the actual show. So I was like, if I saw this little goofy thing, I would probably fall in love with him. Like, like he's super handsome, but like there's no personality on the show. Like they didn't give him any room to like, also to be fair, like all the contestants all around were not like super great the ones that were great got sent home so that's tea on that well abc if you're li- abc if you're listening an hour and 30 minutes into our <laughs> podcast episode 21 um kim is ready and her phone i've is been on. ready for years you can look at my instagram anyway oh uh, <laughs> where were we that's the way kim wants to be batch oh oh that's it reality tv yeah fat phobic put a pin to the that. max oh 100 percent um and then finally oh i, w- I never oh. finished my are you the one tangent i like started on it and i know you it. never did okay go ahead um but that show I actually know what that is. it was it's like a tv dating show i literally know about every single dating tv show that's ever existed like yeah. it's terrifying Your youtube history dating tv that's it and jersey shore um and yeah anyways <laughs> Um, are you the one in the later seasons did have a little bit more body diversity and I'm pretty sure they had a season where like everybody was bi or something like that. That's so Or funny. everybody was like gay or something. No, something a reality sh- TV show. It was so entertaining. No, yeah, a reality TV show where everybody is bi sounds like mm-hmm. good television. Yeah. Because you truly cool. cannot see what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. So I think, I think it just like they start. they did it already when the show is kind of like fading out so that's why it just didn't work but i think it could work and a lot of people want it yeah so like why not i don't know people just don't want to take the risk you know what does have a lot of diversity 90 day fiance (laughs) they have so many like no like the, okay, let's be honest. The demographic for 90 Day Fiancé is, like, older people. Mm-hmm. So the fact that they're introducing to these older generations, like, bi character, like, they're explaining bisexuality to these people. That's like a point. They're explaining non-binary uh, people to older generations. They're explaining, like, there's, there's like, gay relationships on the show. Outside they're exposing... Of- yeah, they're exposing older people to this. Yes. So I Okay, we I'm, give it for 90 Days Fiance. We do stand. I'm such a I just think it's fiance. funny, like, Daniel likes to insert it, like, just... Every single episode. Every we could be talking yeah. about anything, and I'll be like, 90 no, Days Fiance. No, literally, I know it's coming. When he's like, you know what, also... I saw it in your eyes. I you like, knew I was going to say it. Yeah, exactly. You got to go on a Bachelor's tangent, so this is... But it was relevant to the point. <laughs> I've okay. never talked about The Bachelor before, I don't think. I'm sure I have, but, like, no. not as much as you talk about 90 Day. I just love Anyways, it. in conclusion, yeah, hyper, yeah, well, like hyper masculinity in general. Like, I was talking to some of like my guy friends like before this. So I'm like, so like, what do you talk about with your friends? <laughs> like, what is going on in your conversations? And they just like don't have deep conversations. Like, they just talk about everything going on around them, but they never talk about how they're actually feeling. Like, especially like for example, like when you're talking about a relationship, you're like my girl did this and that and that it's never like okay how did that make you feel that she like reacted that way and like you guys had an argument that's so it's, interesting because yeah. i just watched a modern family episode not to bring that back but <laughs> like basically the one of the storylines was that like jay the older the older guy character um was his brother came over and like his wife gloria like what's her name sophia vergara mm-hmm. she was like you guys don't talk about anything he's like we talk all the time she's like no but you're not like there's no meaning like there's literally like you guys could talk for an hour like Mm -hmm. multiple hours and like nothing is said yeah exactly and she was like mad about it because she was like why don't you tell each other that you love me he's like that's not how we talk and i'm like she was like so angry about it i'm like yeah "Yeah," because like i also think that culture is like uh, like a lot of hit i think hmm, i don't know actually i don't know never mind i was gonna say i was gonna say that I, i think american culture is especially like toxic masculinity hold on let me start that sentence over i think american culture has a lot more tax- toxic masculinity in terms of talking about your emotions <gasps> the fuck? dude that's a second i thought that was your mouse <laughs> was like, why is it moving like that um but then again other cultures also have toxic masculinity it's just yeah, different it, it hit, yeah it hits different is it that what you're different. gonna say well because i was reading like the comments <laughs> yeah. i was reading the comments on like my uh like from a professor no 
No, I because my professor posted this on his like website and like somebody responded to it and she's like, yeah, and uh, at next culture like we have machismo. Yeah. Or, I'm so sorry. Why? Because I'm not pronouncing that right. Yeah, you, yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I always like. I'm so sorry if I pronounce it wrong. I really me, don't mean every it. time I have to pronounce a single. Yeah, name. but like that's like a different type it, of text yeah. and masculinity in a different culture because i do know? think i think in latin culture i think it is a like it's breeded differently yeah like you are like talking about emotions i, I think showing affection is more okay mm-hmm. but like not talking about it I don't yeah know if yeah that makes sense. like giving flowers but not like talking about yeah. like, whereas in american culture it's like literally nothing do not show any emotion yeah so don't feel, like, and then like that's how it ties into like body image and i feel like men like literally never talk to their friends they never talk to anybody about their body image like Daniel never talked to me about no. body image until literally this got brought up pretty much yeah. like he would like inch at it but i never like wanted to i never want people like to force people like no. talk about that shit like just like i literally don't want to talk about it. yeah exactly and respecting people's boundaries with that but also like letting them know that it's okay to talk about no. it because I think also, especially in men, it comes from a place like I'm not allowed to talk about it. I've never seen anybody talk about it. It's never been like okayed for me. And like, you don't need that okay. Yeah. Y- you talk about however you're feeling about your body in any capacity, whether it has to do with gender, whatever it has to do with like weight, like you talk to the person you trust the most with that information about. Mm-hmm. And I think that's like the biggest takeaway that we need to see in media and like, especially film and television is like, seeing more men have those conversations. I think in like a lot of like newer TV shows, like they kind of show it a little bit more like men talking to each other, but it's still like they talk and then they make a joke about it at the end. And it's like, okay, well, you just kind of fucking defeated the purpose. Yeah, of, like, but also it's talking. television. like Yeah, I guess, but like yeah. a drama, like, Oh yeah, yeah. You know, like I'm not um, talking about like on my block and stuff like that. Like sitcom shows, you know, which are still like valid. I'm trying to think of like an example. You don't really watch that many drama shows, no? I do. Do you? The, I'm trying to think of one. I don't know. I haven't watched a drama show in a For minute. some reason, I, I'm like a comedy stan all of a sudden. Like, I love comedy. Like, I, I was like, oh, horror, horror, horror. But now yeah. all of a sudden, I'm like... It just takes comedy. you out of reality. And the, everything, everybody needs a laugh right now. Yeah. Anyways, I think that's what we need I'm to... I'm at Riverdale. Oh. Like, oh, Archie yeah. will never talk to Jughead about his body. <laughs> well, then again, they all have six packs, so I don't... Yeah. I know that ass. Like, at that point, what's the point of the talking about it? Mm-hmm. There's no pet characters in Riverdale. I think we need to create a space for men to have more conversations. Men, if you're, if you're listening to this, definitely go. The 11% of our male listeners. Yeah, definitely go watch. The first step I would say is watch that Justin Baldoni okay, yeah. um, TED Talk. And then I think once you watch that on YouTube, there will be more things. And like the thing is, you don't even have to start talking to actual people. You can build up the courage by watching YouTube videos if it makes you even more comfortable watch it on the private browser like you know what i mean go make a reddit post men love reddit for some reason like go tell reddit about your yeah what you're feeling yeah whatever gets it out exactly put it in your notes app put it in go to therapy okay also I men know. don't go to therapy no i know i know <laughs> yeah that's true it's yeah it is very expensive but if you're in college take advantage of your free sessions a lot of schools have free sessions. Yeah. Um, but I think... <sighs> in conclusion, to wrap it all up, yeah. TV and, and film need to do better in representing fat people because guess what? Almost like... Fat people and average people. Yeah, I don't know what the statistics are, but like America does not look like Chris Hemsworth. That is a very small percentage mm-hmm. of people. And so as soon as we start showing more body types and showing more body types, just having storylines that aren't about what they look like Mm -hmm. because a lot of times when we have fat characters the storyline is learning to love yourself and not like anything else like literally anything else and so i think as soon as we start doing that it will affect the generations that are coming especially when it's rooted in like children's tv shows Mm -hmm. so i think we start there and then let's this generation doesn't need to go through what we went through and let's start changing it there and then i think it'll trickle up as this generation of like creative people and writers and actors um, have the right idea about body image. And then they're the ones writing it for the next generation of kids. And it like slowly mm-hmm. improves. I think that's the only solution because. Yeah, that is the only solution. Yeah. Diversify writer's rooms back yeah. to the first episodes. That's the conclusion we came to every time, every time. Yeah. And yeah. 
Anyways. Anyway, so join us next week when we're going to do this all again, but from the female perspective, because that is a whole other... Yeah. Uh, I've also been waiting for this one. Turn it up. Yeah, waiting for this one. Turn it up. Um, so, Luis, do you want to plug your social media, anything, anything that you want people um, to take a look at, anything you want to plug uh, where people can find your work? Uh, yeah, I think uh, my Instagram is um, G, G's Luis. So it's uh, G and then three E's, Z E dot L U I S S. That's my Instagram. That's where I usually have my my um, my photo sessions, which I love to have, and some of my work. So go ahead and give it a follow. Mm-hmm. And then all of this will be on our Instagram as well at our period Hollywood, um, and then our TikTok that we never post on. TikTok is just so much work. It is at our Hollywood. Yeah. I'm trying, but like I really cannot. <laughs> Kim is the TikTok guy store. I'm not. I do fashion TikTok. It's a whole different ball game. I just, it's film. just, I just look at like the thing where like the camera is, and there's so many buttons that I'm like, I don't even. I should get insecure because there's already so many great film people on TikTok. I'm like, I can't even compete. Like they do amazing things. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, check us out on there. Um, yeah. Thank you everyone for listening. Um, do your research about things. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, join us next week. Thank you. Any last words? Because that was, like, really low energy, and I don't want to end it on that. Oh, um. Uh, ooh, I don't know. I thought it was fine. But I was, like, low energy, and I didn't want to be, like, oh, like. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know. I'm ready to talk about from the female perspective for Woo! next week. Ooh. Okay, that's better. <laughs> <laughs>